how to retain your audience long term. Okay, so as an independent musician, as an independent producer doing your thing, your audience is really what's going to help to catapult your career to the next level. So we want to make sure we don't lose our audience. So we're going to talk about the five ways that you can retain your audience. Starting with number one, you gotta have exclusive content. Okay, and you gotta do it in a very feel good kind of way. All right, so what we're talking about is give your audience a reason to stay engaged. Okay, so it's not just the same stuff that you're putting out everywhere else. And what could that be? All right, so I'm going to give a couple and then you can. But the first just being early access. If you can give someone that special kind of early access or seeing behind the scenes or getting like an acoustic version of a song, doing merchandise, discounts, these are things that are like real feel good. And when you can make someone who cares about what you're doing feel good, they're going to want to stick mm. around and support you long term. Yeah, I love that. It, it, it's all about just the kind of making people feel that they're a part of something and always rewarding the people that are not just a casual listener or just kind of came in loose like they are your your actual fan base and stuff. So even things like having when you have a single coming out, having an exclusive merch drop and we've done tons of videos on merch on this channel, too. So I invite you to take a look at those. But just doing it like an exclusive like merch drop of like a poster that promotes the album or the or a t-shirt that that does that's just limited edition to, to to build excitement and hype because everything just you know you want to create that urgency absolutely so on the best ways to retain your audience number one you're going to offer exclusive content but then number two you're going to actually respond to people on social media the whole yes. point is that you are building to connect with people who care and support you and are going to come to your show and buy your shirts and pay your subscription fees and before you get them to ever do something like pay you a dollar you need to build that connection you do that by responding to comments on social media if you don't have a large following the obligation on you is even more right don't I, I should never be going to your social media profile and see that you have like two comments on a post and you haven't responded to either people or either person Right. Absolutely. And, and you know, things like that are we actively um, throughout the week, we scout different artists and producers and record labels because we have you know different programs and things like that. Um, but that's one of the things that we look for. We look if, you know, for the engagement that they're getting or do they have the basics? Do they know how to respond to them? Are they, you know, nurturing their audience that's there? Think about how often you actually leave a comment on a post. It's I'm willing to bet it's not really that often for how many, you know, percentage wise for how many posts that you see. So just think about that for your audience. If somebody's going to take the time, even if it's like four seconds to drop an emoji, it's important that you recognize. Responding goes a long way. So then number three, when it comes to how to retain your audience long term, go beyond the music. You got to show your personality. You have to yeah. share something other than you just promoting your music every single day. Okay. So what are your hobbies? What are you into? Like, you don't have to show everything. You don't have to share stuff you don't want to share, but there's other sides to you. And what that does is it deepens the connection that yeah. you have by sharing those experiences, by sharing those interests, and it's going to create a genuine connection. And like, even with me, you know, I, I wanted to just kind of deepen the connection with my audience. And so I started sharing about artists that I like and bands that mm -hmm. I like. And so it connected me better with people who are also into those bands. So that's one way that you can do it. Yeah, and thinking about things like, you know, um, when you're doing easy content. So like you you were mentioning, just showing bands that you're into. I know you did those band shirt transitions where you're wearing, you know, a band shirt that you were liking and then it just was a content for something else. And um, it shows your personality. Not every post on your artist page, it, it has to kind of feel like a, even if it's not your person, even if you have like another IG account that's your personal IG and then you have an artist IG account or however you do it, uh, just make sure that you're, you know, it looks, it still feels like a, a personal IG account. It still feels like you're kind of sharing yeah. things. And, and I even like literally use myself. So, you know, this is what he's talking about. So I did some transitions. I'm wearing a band shirt of a band that I like. The song that's playing is to, you know, a band also that I like. And there's a before and after. So it's really simple. It's just to share. And then literally talking to the camera, sharing stories, sharing some thought mm, that yeah. I had. Talking about going to, you know, a music festival, talking about the bands that I like. So these are all ways, again, just to deepen the connection with someone who kind of cares. And all if right? you keep it real with yourself and it's something that's genuine, it's like it's going to be easy and you're actually going to feel, 
you're going to come off confident because you actually care about this stuff. And it, it's just going to help you be feeling more comfortable in front of the camera, doing these things because they're real to who you are. You're not like, I'm not, you're not trying to like learn a new TikTok dance in order, because you feel like that's what people are doing TikTok and that's what you have to do. No, it's just about connecting with other people on the platform through things that you're into. That's right. So that number four on how to retain your audience long term, get a damn calendar. Mm. Okay, so you're going to get a calendar to keep yourself <laughs> on track. So you are releasing music regularly so that you are posting yeah. regularly. If you don't have a plan, then you're just not going to do it. Because guess what? Most of the time you don't feel like doing stuff. Mm. But as a business and as a business that's going to get to six figures and beyond, you have to sit down and discipline yourself with actually staying consistent. And you do that with getting a calendar you have to have it your google calendar on your phone setting yourself timers and alarms whatever keeps you on track and you know having like a piece of paper even in front of you that has your you know your release checklist so you just don't try to recall all the information have it somewhere in a word document of what you need to do for your new release so you're not like oh i totally forgot to register my music or Oh, I That's totally right. forgot to write my press release so I can sit in Spotify for artists and it's the last day that I can do it. And I have no idea how I'm going to fill those 500 characters to pitch my song to have it have a chance on Spotify. That's right. And then number five on how to retain your audience long term, it's be unusual and create unusual, unique experiences for your fans. Now, okay. there are things that we can point to, such as pop up meet and greets. If you're doing live shows, you can do the VIP stuff, right? Backstage passes and meet and greets. Um, but you can do, you know, like fan club kind of meetups, you can do yeah. all kinds of things that just really mm, dive deeper into the relationship with the fans who care who are going to be like your street team members who are going to promote you, they're going to be the ones that get out the word of what you're doing especially if you if you are able to monetize on youtube if you've grown your channel to to doing that you can actually set up you know where people have kind of like memberships to your channel and that's where you pop on and the members can have a you know a special live stream with you um you could do things like i know that uh one of my favorite artists is thero so she used to back in the days like patreon but this carries over to even now she would offer experiences where they could go hiking with her on a meetup. You know, they all everybody met at a you know a karaoke bar one night, and they it's would funny. do karaoke, and they would see her doing that. Um, there was things for, you know for the patrons like she would call some, some of you up and like like read you a lullaby or sing you a lullaby or something. Like, there's all kinds of unique things that you can do, and the more unique and the more connected kind of experience, you know, all within safety. Stay safe. Um, but I mean, you can actually, if you're thinking of even merch items, you can also charge for those experiences, but it's more about just finding ways that you can connect more with your fans that are buying into you. And we're doing that because we're going to be genuine. We're going to stay consistent and we're working on building the relationship with That's the people it. who actually care about what we're doing, which is a lot more than we can say for even our family and even our friends. So you guys are killing it. Right. Make sure you subscribe so you can get more videos helping you with your music career.